Hello, everybody. We got a little midweek touch in base for you guys. The trade deadline has just ended. We had some Mariners moves and some moves across the league we'd like to talk about and wanted to make you the most informed fan base. So let's uh, dive right into it. I think the biggest thing, first and foremost, Paul Seawald is now a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We pretty much predicted that would happen and show enough, it did. Yeah, I mean, the Mariners needed to trade from their strengths, and our strength is our bullpen. Paul Seawald is our best bullpen piece. He's a lockdown closer, and he's great for any team that needs a closer in the race right now. And uh, we got three pieces back for him, which is nice. We it shored is. up our second base, our outfield, and we got a prospect. So um, I can't say I like that we trade Paul Seawald when we're down looking down the stretch and need that lockdown closer, but we have to trade from our strengths and he's the guy we could get the most from. And we, we got a little haul. We shored up the second base spot where Colton Wong was struggling and we shored up an outfield spot, left-handed bat, uh, where AJ Pollock is now missing. Colton Wong got DFA today. Woo. Good. Finally. Goodbye. Sweet Prince. I mean, I've been calling for this since the end of May. I was like, dude, I give him two weeks. I give him till Father's Day. It was a long time coming. It needed to happen. You know, it. I do feel just slightly bad for the guy as a person. I mean, strictly unbaseball related. He's a guy. He didn't want to come here and perform poorly. And, you know, these are real people out there on the field. It does suck uh, for him. It's unfortunate. But it was, I mean... It's a no-brainer. He needed to go. And it, it, the only thing I wish, I wish that his pinch hit two-run home run would have resulted in a win for the Mariners so he could have had, like, that one <laughs> shining moment. It sucks that it didn't happen, but, I mean, let's agree. The Mariners are a better team now that he is no longer on it. Pollock and Wong both needed to go, and I'm glad that the Giants picked up Pollock so we didn't have to DFA two guys. At least someone was willing to pay his contract. Also, I saw there's a chance that the Red Sox are in talks with getting Colton Wong, possibly, which, okay. Yeah, I'm picking him up off the waivers, or is that still a trade possibility for the Mariners? I know they can still like work a trade through the waivers somehow, so I don't know. Maybe they'll just pick him up off of waivers and, and run with it, but I mean, I'm, I've been calling for it for a long time. It sucks the Mariners' front office didn't want to make a decision earlier in the trade market, because like we've just been making these marginal trades like they've been telling us they're not going to go make the splashy move. The Mariners have played well enough in July that the front office is forced to, you know, not sell a guy like Teoscar Hernandez even with all of the interest from around the league like the Phillies, the Giants. There's a lot of teams interested in Teoscar, even the Blue Jays. There was a minute when I was like I saw that. Shoot, he's going to go back to the Blue Jays and like take off with them and feel right at home, but I mean, that didn't happen. The Mariners played well enough to force the front office not to sell that guy and maybe we'll just throw the qualifying off offer at him at the end of the year that's going to be like 20 mil or something and see if he'll stay again i will say this though i do think the trading of paul seawald was a seller move um you know a closer down the stretch especially someone that dominant couldn't really help a team out now we do have the bullpen strength it does make sense to move that piece but it wasn't necessarily a win now move it does help our roster but you, you guys get what i'm saying with that where like it is a little yeah. bit of a seller move yeah but at the same time we're we got josh rojas who has played in the majors for a couple of years and he's you know he's a utility infielder kind of guy and he's decent he's he seems like a caballero type guy he hits left-handed which is nice we got dominic canzone who has been one of the best players in the minor leagues in triple a this year and hasn't had a whole stint within the majors. He's played only like, I don't know, 17 games or something like that in the majors, but they're both on our roster tonight. And that's way better than having Colton Wong and AJ Pollock. Like we'll see what these younger guys can do and maybe they'll fit in with our core here and actually be something like, like Caballero has been like something that kind of sparks the team and has the right kind of energy. 
As we're recording this, it's about 4.30 on Tuesday right now. Justin Hollander was just on the radio saying the reason they made this trade is to put players on the field right now. And so they didn't want to pick up any AAA guys. They wanted players that they could put on the team and hopefully make this last little push. So I do see what you're saying mm. about how it's a bit of a seller move, but... At the same time, what we got in return was players that we can use right now. Today. Today. Also, I want to give DePoto props for not trading Seawald to the Diamondbacks in the middle of the series. <laughs> Thank you for at least waiting for the series to be over. Because yeah. we all remember the Toro for Graveman fiasco oh, win. Yeah. That was the game that Dylan Moore hit the Grand Slam. It was that massive comeback against the Astros. Morale was at an all-time high, and after that game, he traded Graveman across the field to the Astros. That and that, it wasn't a bad trade, especially at the time. Toro didn't work out, and Graveman has bounced around. So it was in the end, it was kind of a wash. Let's finish that story. The next day, after they got traded, Toro hit a grand slam off of Graveman late <laughs> in the game, which was epic. Double agent, Graveman. <laughs> right, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't so much. A terrible trade. It was more about the... Timing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> also, in other kind of funny news, the LOL Mets stay taking L's. They had Verlander and Scherzer on their roster. They spent buku bucks, and they are both gone. Verlander is back on the Astros. Scherzer is on the Rangers. It's about as Metsy as it gets -y. <laughs> For real. It's so funny watching the Mets just met it up. Dude, they signed two aces in, in their offseason. Uh, all of their fans were stoked. I mean, it could go one of two ways. They got rid of DeGrom, and they signed these two guys. They're like, okay, here we go. These are our one-two punch all year, and it hasn't been that way. I mean, Verlander is coming back into form. Scherzer's been not Scherzer. I mean, they're getting old. They're kind of falling off. The I mean, the Rangers are really trying to go for it this year. They've been spending an insane amount of money, but they've been doing it in a smart way. That makes me think, you know, that ultimate fleece of getting your player back after that <laughs> epic trade. Does Seawald come back to the Mariners once he's a free agent? I mean, who's to say? He does have another year of control, so he'll be on the Diamondbacks for at least all of next season. But who knows? Maybe he comes back. Maybe they're playing the long game. The long con. 4D chess con. out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, the thing is, we've seen time and time again, relievers are finicky. We've talked about it numerous times. You can have someone be lights out, and then all of a sudden can't get an out. So, you know, honestly, we want the best for Seawald. It does suck seeing someone like him go. But, again... It's a flip of the coin with relievers, especially from year to year. Who knows? And hopefully, you know, he does well for the Diamondbacks. Want nothing but the best for him. So At least he's in the National League and we don't have to see him. <laughs> like, that would be tough to have Seawald come in and, like, wreck us. I mean... He we could be a double agent like Tom Wilhelmson. Yeah, I think we do play Arizona pretty soon, actually. Now that the whole schedule's been shuffled up, we might see him soon. But, yeah, all the best for Paul Seawald. Everyone around Paul loves him. I call him dad. He has serious dad vibes. He holds it down in the bullpen. Every time he's pitching, it's it's fun to watch. It's exciting. And I think he's a leadership presence in our clubhouse and that we're losing. And now it's kid zone instead of having a parent around, but I don't know. That's just me. That's true. Our team also did get even younger with trading him and getting more younger pieces. We've got a young squad here now, which means if you can keep these guys and develop them, you should have a good core for years to come, hopefully. So, yeah, I've been kind of saying for a while now, like the Mariners have taken the Astros whole – thing from the last 10 years and like they had a whole young core that all grew up together through their system that and then they trade for pieces when that core is up and ready you know our core is burgeoning right now with julio with cal even ty jp is having his best season ever um we have a young core of players kellenic if he wasn't hurt they are burgeoning we have gilbert we have kirby we have uh, now Miller and Wu. We have a whole homegrown talent pool. 
that we want to keep these guys around. All the talk of maybe trading Gilbert was kind of making me mad. Like, it's a fun thing to talk about, sure, but everyone that's talking about it is like, uh, I don't know, this is fun to talk about, but they shouldn't do it. It's like, why talk about it then? <laughs> like, talk 24 about 24 hour news cycle. Yeah, you know, like he's not going anywhere. He's a staple in our rotation. It'd be a huge mistake to trade a guy that big at this point in our growth, in our window. And we're trying to keep our window open and retool and get rid of all these bums that we signed in the offseason. Hollander took credit for that. He was like, man, those were just bad decisions, and that's on me. Like, that wasn't ownership. That was on the baseball operations department and that's us that's me that's jerry we thought these were going to be better decisions and like play out better with listella even like he he said that's all on him it's not on the ownership not opening the books they just didn't make the right moves and they don't go for the flashy big free agent often nope they went for wong pollock and listella all gone now all bums good off season guys cole calhoun and cole calhoun <laughs> Good so, job, team. So now that our off season is over and we didn't get anybody, <laughs> now we have a couple of guys that can fill in a role and uh, maybe make this team go a little bit. With Cade Marlowe coming up too, he's looking pretty good. He's performing well. He can step in for Kellenic. All right, kissing Cade Marlowe. Hell yeah! <laughs> At least we didn't trade Tay Oscar or Ty France. There was all of this talk about trading Ty France and Tay Oscar Hernandez. They were fielding offers. I'm glad they didn't go do that. With a 17 and 9 July tied Ooh. with the Orioles for the best July, the yeah, the best, best July or best record. And that means the Mariners are one of the hottest teams. And honestly, when I looked at our core players, a lot of our core players are performing a lot better over that last month, especially Julio, Cal. Like, they're they're really picking it up. Tay Oscar's been bad. Ty France is picking it up in the last like week and a half, but over the last month has been pretty bad. Apparently he saw a chiropractor and like I didn't worked. hear anything about that when you sent me that message. Yeah. Oh, you day. didn't know like, about that? No. Uh yeah, basically the team chiropractor saw that Ty France wasn't opening up enough because he like couldn't turn his or he was opening up too much because he couldn't like turn his neck properly. So the chiropractor hit him up. And was like, hey, you have this issue. Let's realign you. So what's concerning to me about that is, isn't it a little weird that the team chiropractor noted this, noticed this issue with Ty France's swing before the team hitting coach? Isn't that uh, yeah. weird? Why is the chiropractor noticing issues with Ty France's swing and not the hitting coach. Yeah, why wouldn't someone notice and be like, hey, Ty, why are you opening up your stance so much now? Like, why is it getting more open? Like, and he's in the answer would be, I can't turn my neck far enough to see the pitcher, <laughs> you know? But I don't think anyone said that, you know? It just seems like it went unnoticed until the guy was like, hey, you can't turn your neck, dude. Like, let me fix your range of motion so you can get back to seeing the ball. And, and like adjust your stance so you can have some power. And I mean, he seems like a guy that can hit for power, but just doesn't like why he's very contact oriented, but I think he can sell out a little bit, but I'm so glad he stuck around, man. I want to buy one of his jerseys. I'm waiting till we sign him up, give him an extension and uh, I'll buy his jersey. I'll wear it. I love Ty France. I think he's going to be a big part of this thing in the next couple of years. So I'm glad he's not gone. I'm glad we kept Tay Oscar, even though he's so streaky. We know he's going to drop a 900 OPS for a couple of weeks and help us in the long run. Like, he's going to pick it up again. He's just that guy. I'm also very, very happy that we kept our young core together. And to be fair, I was one of the guys that kind of entertained the idea of maybe trading Logan or Miller. And it was something that, again, when we were talking about needing to spend money to make money and you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, I could just see on paper how it would be possible for those guys to be traded. I'm glad that it didn't. And also, uh, Logan made some comments and, you know, how much of it is just like PR, like saying the right thing. But he made some comments when you asked about like the trade deadline and coming up and stuff. He seemed 
happy to be with the Mariners. He's like, this team has believed in me. This is the only place I know, so they have a special place in my heart. I would like to stay, but it is a business. If they move me, whatever. And, you know, who knows what his real thoughts are because anything could just be PR speak. We get it. It's a business. You got to be out there saying the right things. But it seemed genuine enough that he does like the Mariners and is happy to be here. Gilbert's a cerebral guy. Like, he understands the business side of things and the romantic side of baseball at the same time, just like Paul Seawald. Like, Seawald was super professional about everything he said about the Mariners, giving him a chance, letting him burgeon here and... and spread his wings and be who he is here in the community and on the team and now another team wants him bad enough that they're going to trade for him mid-season and try to help them get to the playoffs you know like that's really cool and Paul understands that he platformed here with the Mariners and he's he's said even like he's the Mariners are always going to have a piece of my heart and like it's the same for us Paul Seawald's always going to be a Mariner in my heart he's he's the man and uh yeah, nothing but the best for him. And Gilbert, I think, is the same type of dude where, like, he's going to be thinking on both sides of that. He understands that it's a business and that the team can get so much for him. He's very valuable at this point in his career. Also, Paul Seawald, despite his kind of dad and calm demeanor, has no problem with being a little cocky. And, you know, he's swept the Blue Jays off the field <laughs> in the past and Hell yeah. has no problem showing some emotion and taunting a little bit. Telling the Mets fans what's up. <laughs> Do you think that if he ever has a clutch save against the Mariners, he might give them a little how do you do? I mean, I don't want to blame it. would be funny, especially because we love him so much. But I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a save against the Mariners and maybe gives a little extra oomph as he's walking off the field? I think so. I mean, there'd be underlying love behind that, a brotherly uh, taunt, you know, and it'd be fun. I'd like to see it even. I, don't, I wouldn't mind if he did. Totally wouldn't mind. We're big Seawald fans. I want to see him be Paul Seawald. I don't want him to rein it in just because he's got to save against the Mariners, mm. you know. So it's kind of weird, like, we were talking about the Mariners and Cardinals being a really good trade. Timing. <laughs> Nailed it. A really good... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what do I even do? The Cardinals also... The Cardinals did move a lot of pieces. It seems kind of weird that the Mariners didn't jump on any of those because they were definitely sellers. Yeah, I mean, they moved Jordan Montgomery, who's a left-handed pitcher, and we need left-handed pitching. He's a veteran lefty. We could have used him because Wu and Miller both have innings limits this year. So with Marco out and Robbie Ray out, we have, like, no lefties. We did end up picking up Logan Allen off the waiver wire. He's a left-handed pitcher who was pitching for the Guardians the last couple years. He's made starts in the majors. He's, he has experience. I think he's in AAA right now. So I think Logan Allen might be part of the mix if we need a left-handed pitcher. I think we still have Tommy Malone down there, right? I mean, we have a couple options to get lefties into our rotation to kind of eat innings to help with the Wu Miller problem later in the season. But we need to make sure those matchups are quality, and we need to make sure that we're not just throwing a game away if that kind of thing happens. All in all, I'd say... The trade deadline was slightly underwhelming, but what more do you expect from the Mariners? I mean, they tend to make the underwhelming moves. They did add pieces that makes our roster better, at least hopefully, and for the long run. And with the good stretch we're going on right now, we're still not out of the playoff picture. We have these younger guys that we've added. We've lost a closer, but... We have enough bullpen strength that hopefully, you know, it doesn't hurt us too bad. We can rock Munoz in the closer spot. I think Topa's been very well this year. And if we need the lefty, Spires there too. Yeah, Gabe the babe. I mean, it is a little bit disappointing because we didn't rip that trade with the Cardinals where we could get Newt Barr or Carlson or Edmund or... De Young, is it De De Young? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. both of those guys. Like either combination of those guys and Jordan Montgomery would have helped the Mariners a lot. We would have had to spend a little more out of our farm, like trade them prospects because they're looking to retool as well. 
But at the same time, it would have helped them a lot more than just like trading Seawald for to shore up our holes, which isn't bad. All in all, you know, it's kind of a wash. I'm sad to see Seawald go, but I mean, we'll see what this team can do now. Uh, we, we have a little bit more depth than we've had, and I, I like that. I'm just disappointed we didn't go for a Cardinals trade. That would have been kind of sick. It would have. And, you know, that's just one of those things you come to expect from the Mariners. They never make the, like, traditional big-name move that you're expecting. Uh, the Seawald one definitely was written on the wall for a little bit, but still, you know, you're expecting kind of, oh, are they going to add this big piece, this big piece? They don't traditionally add the big piece that everyone's like talking about and a lot of those big pieces were off the market too like cody bellinger went off the market we were talking about cody bellinger and stroman the cubs held on to both of them because the cubs went on like an eight game winning streak and the front office was forced to like say yeah we're not trading them anymore like we're kind of going for it now that is kind of funny to think about too is just like if the Angels hadn't gone on their big win streak right before the deadline, if the Cubs didn't go on their big win streak, would they have been more w- willing? Because Angels were kind of buyers. They added a couple pieces as well. They added some pitching help. Yeah, Giolito. Yeah, Giolito was a big one. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on this, I believe they added Flaherty from the Cardinals. Did they add Flair? I'm pretty certain. Jay Flair? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look it up. Orioles. Oh, it wasn't the Angels. It was the Orioles that acquired Jack Flaherty from the Cardinals. Actually, color me mistaken. They needed started p- starting pitching too, and Jay Flair is a good option. All in all, I'd say it was a pretty fun, semi underwhelming deadline across the league. There was a couple big moves, uh, enough to keep us semi entertained. But watching uh, Verlander and Scherzer move on was pretty funny. Seeing some of the starting pitching from around the league get moved around was fun. Mariners bolstered their roster pretty nice. And, you know, let's just keep this train, this momentum going. The Mariners have been hot in July, and hopefully they can carry it on down the stretch. Yeah, I calculated that if we keep playing at the clip we did in July, that we'll end up with 91 to 92 wins. We're right in the mix there. That's where the wild card with the expanded playoffs, the wild card seems to cut off right there at like 90 plus wins. And there are a lot of teams in the mix right now. We're playing the Boston Red Sox right now and then the Angels for four games. So we have a chance to go up on two teams that are just above us in the standings and jump them and be in the mix with the Blue Jays and the Astros again. We're not even that far from the top of our division now. Texas lost quite a few games in a row. Houston's been in the mix there, but they're both kind of at the top now. Like, they're really close now. And the Mariners are, like, four and a half games behind the division and, like, three and a half out of the wild card because of that. And I don't know. We'll see what the Mariners can do, see if we can jump the Red Sox and the Angels right now. Well, that has been touching base, a little midweek episode for you guys especially to keep you all informed in all the big mariners news that has just happened now the trade deadline is in the books uh if you're at work in the office someone's asking questions about the trades and stuff direct them to this episode and we'll fill in all their knowledge and they can be just the most informed fan base (laughs) in the pacific northwest yeah please we want your questions like send them to us (laughs) Yeah, feel free to give us a shout. We love talking baseball. It's our favorite thing to do in the world. Uh, It's been nice talking with y'all, giving you a little midweek update, and we'll be back on Saturday recording another brand new episode for you guys. Thank you all so much for listening, and we'll be back on Saturday. And go Mariners! Clip, clop, clip, clop. I'm a little hoarse. <clears throat> knock, knock. Who's there? What's the secret to comedy? Or, oh, fuck. I You're up. a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Good whoopsie joke. daisy.